Specials are the most crucial element of Splatoon 3, and with 15 of them, we have the most in the series. So today I want to give you one tip for using and countering every special in the game. I'll be going in order of the special roles. If you haven't seen my video on that and want to see more information about specials, I'd highly recommend checking it out. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Let's get started. Against Zipcaster, even if you're a more mobile weapon, the safest play is to move around constantly to avoid not dying, and especially going near teammates. Setting up 2v1 situations can make it really easy to kill the Zipcaster user, and at the very least, keep yourself from getting killed. A lot of players don't utilize Zipcaster's actual damage ability. It can combo quite well with many of the weapons in it, especially the Splatana Stamper, and even can go through certain objects like the Ink Vacuum, making it reliable as a way to kill that weapon. Against Inkjet, keep in mind its movement speed is very low, and the hitbox of the person using it is actually slightly larger than normal. This means for many weapons with bigger hitboxes, such as blasters or sloshers, and long distance weapons like spotlings and chargers, can easily kill the weapon from a safe distance, so those should be the players who has a priority of focusing it, unless of course it gets really close to something like a shooter. For those using Inkjet though, you can use your squid farm in the middle of the special, which not enough people take advantage of. This gives you added mobility and makes you much harder to hit. It's really useful to use. Even dipping in a squid form for just a little bit to descend slightly in the air can mix up your positioning a bit when people are fighting you. Against Reef Slider, this weapon has a lot of end lag, and unlike a Splatoon 2 baller, there are no invincibility frames after. This means bombs, AoE shots, or even just shooting it normally afterward is reliable damage that gives you a huge advantage when punishing it. This is also why if you're using Reef Slider, my tip is not to always just explode right next to a group of enemies as most of the time it leaves you killed. Take advantage of the invincibility and distance to go far behind the back lines and split team fights, especially if you're a Tetradooly. Splatoon 1 veterans are very familiar with this, but Trizuka has a very distinct sound and when you hear it, it's time to get into cover immediately. The weapon has a fair bit of startup and that sound is basically your warning signal to move because if you're out in the open you are probably the target of this special. I honestly have two tips I'm really close with for Trizuka and they're both simple so I'm just gonna cover both of them. First of all the special actually does really good damage to objects and is multiple shots. This means for something like a crab tank you can hit it with a minor amount of damage and then use the three shots to both break the special and kill the user. This can also work on a slightly weakened big bubbler for example. My other tip is that the arc of Trizuka is actually incredibly useful. There are some reliable spots on certain maps such as the right side of mincemeat and the left side of sturgeon shipyard where you can reliably arc and hit cover spots under walls. These take time to get used to but they are worth learning especially with how commonly people are going to be sitting there. Crap Tank's main weakness is its speed both in its ball form standard fire mode and the standard fire firing itself which has a limited turning speed. This means if you have something that can break it at a safe distance like a charger or special weapon like a booyah bomb or triple ink strike you can reliably hit it from that distance and break the special. Also I I've heard some people don't actually know about this, but sticking out of the crab is not just a visual thing. They are vulnerable up there, and especially if you're behind them, could be really reliable to get a shot. This is a hard tip to word, but when using the secondary fire mode, you can use regular firing mode in between it without sacrificing the fire rate. This also has a really cool one-shot combo if you hit it direct with the secondary fire. When fighting Stamp, keep in mind it does not fully protect it. It's especially vulnerable to sides, and even the front-facing mode does not block shots entirely, especially if you aim lower at the player's feet. When using the special, take advantage of the jump swing to get your rush mode started. Compared to the normal way to start it, it's much faster and less predictable, and you can also use the swing to hit a different direction and then rush on the opposite side. Moving on to the support specials, the most effective way to get rid of Big Bubbler is to prevent it from being used in a relevant location in the first place. If you can keep something like a junior away from the zone and they have to put their bubble somewhere in a corner, you can just fight them where the bubble isn't and ignore the special completely. And on top of that, without breaking the special, it lasts for a whole 15 seconds before they can charge their next one. For using Big Bubble, you could probably infer that putting it in the most relevant and hard to ignore locations is the best thing for it. But since that's obvious, keep in mind that the beacon inside the bubble can be used as a mini meat shield for anyone who gets inside it. The most important thing to keep in mind about vacuum is once it's fully charged or when the duration runs out and you switch to the shot mode, you cannot squid form or do any other actions. Meaning if you're able to shoot them there, you can kill them even before the shot comes out and effectively punish the special. For those using the ink vacuum, STOP POPPING IT ON YOUR SNIPE! YOU HAVE A SPLATTER SHOT DESPERATELY TRYING TO RUN IN MID ALL THESE TERRIBLE MAPS AND YOU'RE JUST PANICKING AND SITTING ON THE PLAT FOR SIX SECONDS ONLY TO FIRE A SHOT THAT HITS NOBODY! MOVE! Ink Vacuum doesn't do much on its own. It is mainly made to protect teammates, especially through hard to move areas of the map. So use it in conjunction with them so they can be invincible and walk forward, forcing the enemies to also shoot, fill up your vacuum, and give you a more powerful shot. Honestly, there's not too much of a 
different to fighting tacticaler players than normally, but the one thing I can say is the arrows that you have from it are actually something that can be seen a bit more easily and can prevent hiding an ink or sharking, so take advantage of that when fighting a team grabbing the tacticaler. For using the special, it's worth noting that the timer of the buffs only starts once you grab the drink, so sometimes you can wait to grab them a little bit later and have them last a bit later during your push, depending on the situation. Wavebreaker is pretty low HP at only 400 points, so if you have a bomb or weapon that can reach it safely, don't be afraid to try to damage and break it, especially when it's out in the open. For using Wavebreaker, my general rule of thumb is about half of the wave should be hitting an area you already control, but the other half should be contesting space the enemy has. Doing this along with placing it in small amounts of cover lead to way more effective Wavebreakers. Finally, it's time to cover the displacement specials. My tip against Booyah Bomb isn't even going to be about the special itself, but the teammates. If someone Booyahs for your Booyah Bomb, that does actually give away their position, which can be really useful for you looking to get a quick kill. The biggest mistake I see from people popping Booyah Bomb is using it too much like a panic button. It does up armor to help keep yourself alive, but that won't work against multiple people or even specific weapons. This special is mainly to give you a vantage point to see where to move in and a displacement tool to move people who can get in the way of where you want to go. Against Inkstorm, keep in mind that the damage it has is incredibly low. While it does last a long time, if you're in a really far away position where you can't get chipped, you can often stay in the storm and fight a little bit before forcing yourself to move. When using storm, you want to get the most out of that long duration. Don't just throw it at someone to where the second half of the storm is already going to be past it. Throw it at a location where it'll affect it for the entire 8 seconds as it travels, such as starting on the Hagglefish Splat Zone and moving behind it afterward to displace enemies. So Morsa made a super good video on this already and was the first person to really publicize it, but it's still worth noting as a lot of people aren't aware of it that Killer Will just follows how you move. Don't dash all the way across the stage because then the lasers following you are going to hurt your enemies. Do smaller movements and you can even stay on things like the Tower Wall and Ink Fact goes on. To get value out of Killer Whale, you need to actually put pressure on the people the special is targeting. Just launching them across the map is not enough. Have another special, a teammate, or yourself apply pressure to them so they have to focus on fighting you while dodging the lasers. Against Tri Strike, keep in mind that they can't use their main, sub, or even swim form when throwing them. Putting a little bit of pressure will force them to try to throw all three Tri Strikes, potentially using some for themselves just to stay alive. Tri Strikes only go off once they hit the ground. By abusing different arcs, you can have them explode simultaneously to create much more pressure. Honestly, Tenet Missile's main job is to force people to move and there's not a lot you can do about it, but you can control where the missiles land, so do be careful you don't put them in a spot like, well, you know, the splat zone. Please keep them off the splat zone. This also includes trying not to put them directly behind your teammate who's trying to run away from their own pair. For missiles, keep in mind if you launch on two targets, it's five missiles each, and on one target, it's ten missiles. This is mainly useful if you really need to clear a specific person off of something like the tower, or try to break a special like the big bubbler or the rainmaker shield. And there you go, one set for fighting and using every special in the game. I hope this helped you, and be sure to like if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys next time.